You're listening to Sonic Hall Radio. Right, would you join us back in the central atrium here in Touchwood? It is World Book Day, so uh, you can, um, yep, by all means. I'm joined by uh, another local author, and his name is John Samuels. Now, John, uh, tell us a little bit about the genre that you enjoy writing about. Uh, well, there's two aspects to the book. Um, one is about football and how disappointing it has been over the last 20, 30 years to see the West Midland clubs decline in importance to become sort of second rate and then all the glory going to the big six and things like that. And so the book looks at why this has happened, who is to blame. And really, it's a, I think it's a basis of bad leadership but not just bad leadership at the club level, bad leadership in the council and the region. Um, there's a chapter in it called A Tale of Sioux Cities, and it's why Manchester's been more successful than Birmingham. So it's uh, looking at the whole picture, not just the teams themselves. Okay. And um, without wishing to say uh, anything against you, John, how long have you been writing now? Because it, it, you, you've been writing for about 50 years, but nobody would have read my other books. They were on advanced financial accounting, corporate finance in Europe. I'm an academic, and it's only when I retired I started to write about my pastime or hobby or whatever you want to call it. So, so your leisure and your, uh, your recreation has now become your next, uh, your next area of focus. That's right. I've written two books on football um, about the globalisation of football. And now, and when I wrote about globalisation, I wanted to write about the West Midlands, but it was a national publisher and I had to write... They only wanted to know about Chelsea and Arsenal and the Manchester teams... So this time I had to go to a local publisher who are interested in the West Midlands. That's right. We've just uh, managed to speak with Alistair um, just beforehand and and he was saying how very important it is to to bring this on. Um, We're we're being joined. One one second, uh, Brenda. We talked about the same things, you see, but mine went back to the 1950s. OK, I'll be with you in half a second. The golden days. Uh, yeah. The golden days. Um, we've, uh, we, we're, uh, we're being surrounded by authors in, uh, in the central atrium here in Touchwood. Uh, World Book Day, as I say. And uh, it, it is on a local level, isn't it? That's what's nice about the publisher. All the books are local, um, about local areas, local history, local hospitals and things like that. I think that, that is grand, actually, yes. Uh, as I said, these national publishers... Um, clearly they want to sell the book all around the world. Nobody's going to buy a book in Hong Kong about West Midland football teams. Well, you never know nowadays. <laughs> well, we've got, as you say, Birmingham owners are in prison in Hong Kong, so one or two might be reading it. I'll send him a copy in prison, actually. And, um, the other thing is, are you local? Where, whereabouts are you from? Well, I was born in Stourbridge. But I live about a quarter of a mile from here in Selly Hall. OK, so um, everything is, uh, is brought down to the community level. How do you feel, uh, just on, as an aside, uh, John, how do you feel our community spirit is currently in, uh, in Selly Hall? Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? Um, well, I, uh, I went to a talk on Friday night um, given by the mayor of, of the West Midlands, Andy Street, who was saying how wonderful everything was going to be. Um, Like, he he, he is standing for re-election within the next 12 months. Um, But all the things seem to be long-term. HS2, the Commonwealth Games, the tram from Birmingham will eventually get to five ways, the cycle track will eventually be finished on the Bristol Road, and then Jaguar Land Rover might put more money in the region. So I think... The answer to your question is, is worrying and not very good. Now, sitting here where we are now, two of the main shops have closed. There was one behind that used to specialise in Peaky Blinders outfits. I don't really know about that. Um, rich and famous. Um, and they've gone out of business now. The one over there has gone out of business. And this, if you like, is Touchwood, the rich part of Sully Hall. And we're suffering. So uh, I'm pessimistic. Um, 
you know, yeah. Yeah. not just for football, but for the whole economy. Okay, and of course, in a in a couple of weeks' time, it'll all change again, won't it? At the end of March. Goodness knows what's going to happen at the end of March. I'm so bored with it. I'm not keeping up with everything. We do. I'm I'm exactly the same. You can, see, you can see actually why people like watching football. It takes their mind off. Uh, the, the, the worries around them, it's escapism. Um, yeah, I suppose it always was in the 30s. You got terraces for 70, 80,000 screaming men to go and to get something out of life. And the disappointment is now that the West Midland clubs aren't providing that. I went to Liverpool last Wednesday to see them beat Watford 5 0. And the pleasure and the atmosphere in the, the pleasure of the people in the stadium, the atmosphere in the stadium was incredible. And you go and see Birmingham City play or Villa play. We haven't had reward, pleasure like that for a time from our clubs. And unfortunately, which is the main point of the book, it's so deep, football now success depends on money, and Birmingham, uh, the West Midlands, doesn't attract, attract those with money. Then they might not be particularly nice people, um, but they've accumulated money one way or another. And Birmingham as a city lacks glamour. Um, and um, the, the, the clubs aren't going to start bringing in sufficient money to get into the top half of the Premier League again. Just my last question for you, John. Um, in the 60s and 70s, um, football, I, I, and I might be wrong, but it was very much a working man's game where at the end of a working week they went and they blew off steam and they and they had an afternoon where they could um, shout and say. Now, how do you think our society has changed for, for that sort of difference in the attendance and the crowd? OK, you can actually... That's it's which point you make. It's a very good one. And at that time, the people owning the club were local businessmen, successful entrepreneurs at a local level. You know, they were the biggest builder in Birmingham or the biggest something in, in the region. And it was a, that. And then it was a local area and um, community thing. And as you say, people left factories and went there. That it all changed in when well, the media, when television moved in and then um, technology changed and they could sell the game all over the world. So they suddenly realised they had a brand to sell. The English clubs um, could be marketed all around the world. And if you're in Hong Kong or Singapore or um, Lagos or somewhere, you, you can watch the matches and watch the top teams. So then it changed. So the money came in from television and then people wanted... The people own clubs. Some own it for... Um, what's it? <laughs> Some, a few own it to try and make money out of it, very few. A few own it as a sort of hobby, as an ego kick. You know, I'm, I'm an, a lot now, it's soft power. It's money coming in from the Middle East, from Qatar, from Abu Dhabi, from the, and they're owning the clubs. And they don't want to make the money, they're just trying to publicise Abu Dhabi and places like that to show what a great country it is. So the, it's become global. It's all part of the globalisation. There's a chapter on globalisation in there. So it changed, as you say, from the, a nice working-class sport that gave pleasure to now it's been taken over by people with different motives. One is to make money. A few are trying to make money. Some of the American owners are very good, Man United owners. But a lot of them coming in now are just looking for soft power. China's the latest. They want to be, what, the top country in the world by about 2040, 2050, and China's taking every, everything in sight. Yeah. They even own a percentage of Manchester City now as well. All right, there you go. So uh, that's how uh, football has changed over the years, and in some ways I'd like to hark back to the olden days of it being a uh, pastime at the weekend. I don't know you can, how we can go back. Um, how do we, like, as you say, there's been a reaction against globalisation, um, the Brexit vote and that is a sign of it but how they can change anything I don't know how they can change it um, I think the, you, you, all you can have possibly is let the um, World Cup and let the European Championships go on at the top level and try and have more local sport like we're sitting here in Solihull where they've got a, a successful team called Solihull Moors 
not many people watch them. It could be you can return to people getting satisfaction from local areas, local teams, except that say you and I were a really star player for Solihull Moors, earning, what, 20,000 a year, 30,000 a year, and someone offers us 10 million a year. Are we as a player going to sacrifice ourselves to keep the local community happy? Your head's going the wrong way, <laughs> Nora, and I agree with you. We're not. We're going to go and sell ourselves and play for Paris Saint-Germain or something like that. So unfortunately, I don't know how we can come back. I'd like to see it come back, but if you're any good, you're going to go for the money as a player. Thank you very much, John. I appreciate it, and I wish you well on your uh, with your book today. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thanks, John. Right, let's um, let's uh, have more of a wander. We'll uh, we'll have a quick wander round. There's uh, a couple more people to speak to here, and uh, there's there's lots of things happening with uh, with different people. So uh, yeah, here we've uh, we've been pointed towards Brenda. Brenda, can I um, can I borrow you, Brenda? Is that okay? Oh yeah, sure. And uh, whereabouts is your book? Uh, is your book? And uh, Brenda is here as well, joining us uh, in the atrium in Touchwood. And uh, Brenda, what's uh, what's your genre? Um, a, a little bit like John's? Oh no, this is a personal story of my childhood, of my teenage years, uh, supporting football. Oh, okay. well, t- tell us more. Well, because there were not many girls didn't support football. See, my father was a Birmingham supporter. He knew the Birmingham players. And when they went down to, um, to Wembley in, in the 50s, he went with the old 31 team because he knew them all. And he was desperately unhappy dis- to discover that I supported the Wolves. <laughs> and uh, uh, you see, the, th- the thing was that um, I, it, everything was so different then. Uh, I mean, I had to go from Birmingham to Wolverhampton to see my team. So one week... I would go to Birmingham and the next week I'd go to Wolves because I couldn't afford to go away with them except a couple of times. And in those days, if you wanted tickets for cup matches, you had to stand outside and queue. They didn't sell them in any other way. And I used to have to ride across from Birmingham on my bike to Wolverhampton to to stand in the queues. And um, I used to go into Jimmy Mullins' um, uh, sports shop and one day when we were talking, he said, you don't want to do that. He said, I'll get the tickets for you and you come to my shop and pay me for the tickets and then you can have them then. And he used to get my cup tickets for me. And, uh, you know, the, uh, I've got hundreds of programmes and tickets and you see, all this is my collection of memorabilia. That was my very first match, Birmingham City, 1954. My father wouldn't let me go to, uh, to Wolverhampton, um, though he never took no, any notice of me before, but he said I couldn't go then. <laughs> but um, then, uh, that one's signed, uh, that one will fetch money. Um, oh, that's a gorgeous one. I paid sixpence for that. And you see, people used to come round on the terraces selling things, pictures of the team and all that. And you see, all these pictures... Um, that I've got in here uh, a signed photograph of Stanley Matthews Uh, I got um, Jackie Milburn's autograph and I said on the bus train going home I got Jackie Milburn's autograph and some lady said who's Jackie Milburn? I thought Philistine Okay, I've just noticed on your first ever game as well you've written uh, who it was against and what the scores were I've got, I've got at least 200 programmes and I've got tickets and I've got... You know, you remember the old um, Charlie Buck and football books? I've got those for the 50s. And I, I went all the way to Wolverhampton one day with, my, uh, with a, uh, a, a duffel bag with one of the Charlie Buck and things so that Billy Wright could sign the picture of himself in it. And, uh, I mean, it was a story of a misspent youth, to be honest. And it, I took it right up to when I went to university because in those days girls, working class girls didn't go to university, I mean I was brought up on a housing estate and uh, the book did, um, did well you know and, and I think um, people could 
a uh, lot of people um, had exactly the same experiences, you know, standing on the terraces and in the freezing cold. And uh, I used to, I took my sister once, and it was so cold with snow on the ground. She put her, her gloves on her feet because she couldn't feel her feet. <laughs> you, know, you know, those were the days. I mean, if 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 a person buys a copy, I always write those were the days. Uh, football is not football anymore. We've it's just uh, we've just heard that from uh, John's perspective as well. We just had a chat it, about it. It's just it's 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 business, and I mean uh, footballers are not people; they're assets. They're worth this much. Well, I mean, we used to wait afterwards, after the matches, and wait for the players to come out and talk to the players and get their autographs. And I mean, people were very, they, they were very, just like us. I mean, they drank in the same pubs as our dads drank in, um, and they were very local. And, of course, the young players who were not married were put into digs by their t- team so that they had somebody to look after them and to make sure they ate properly and all that sort of thing. You imagine that now? Yeah. And so everything's done by medical, isn't it? Oh, Depending on their. It's uh... gone now, you see. Everything's gone. I mean, I'm no, in, no longer interested in football. There's some brilliant footballers, but they don't live anywhere near there. I mean, they come from all over the world. I mean, most of our, uh, our heroes were local. Uh, or they'd been there for years. They lived locally. They, they, you saw them in the shops. Um, I remember being quite taken aback by sitting on the bus with Neil Kinsey, the uh, the uh, Birmingham inside forward who played for Wales. I didn't ask him for his autograph. I didn't dare. Uh, had, had, had they lost? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, we used to actually uh, along the Coventry Road. Uh, the Birmingham City support, uh, players used to get the bus along there because they had some uh, houses, uh, um, club houses. And we used to come out of school and get on the bus where the players were and talk football all the way till we got off. I mean, you couldn't do that now. You'd never see these people. Listen, Brenda, I'd like to uh, wish you all the best of luck with Reflected Glory and uh, your book and I hope you have a lovely day here in the uh, in the in the book fair here oh thanks very much thanks Brenda thank thanks you. for your memories thank you right let's finish up here now then and uh, if you would like to uh, see some more why don't you go to Bruin Books uh, it's a publisher's um, local uh, local publishers it's bruinbooks.com and it's b-r-e-w in books.com uh, and you can go and find out about all of the different local uh, authors that they um, that they publicise here and uh, see exactly what's going on. Thank you very much for downloading and listening to our little book fair Touchwood podcast here, and uh, we hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you. <laughs>